<laughs> so, <laughs> with a name like Hebrews, what do you think it's about? Jews. <laughs> Such a deal. Paul decides to write to the Jews. He'd already tried talking. It ain't working. <laughs> but think about this. Paul finally gets the opportunity to put down on paper exactly what he wants to say specifically to his own people. It is true that they were happened to be in Rome, so he had this opportunity to share with them what was on his heart, what was in his mind, what had been so accomplished within his soul that he was able to apply all of the traditions that he had learned from childhood into the application of the faith that he knew that God wanted him to share because he had finally attained to everything that he'd ever desired when he was a child, which was to uphold the Torah, to fulfill it in completeness, to be so faithful to God, that God Almighty, the yud heh vav -Hey, the very Shekinah glory, the Shekinah, the blessing of God would be upon him, that he would come to him, and it would be the Moshiach, the anointed one, that would reveal himself to Paul, so that he would be able to share and become one with God, and knowing more than what most of those who would walk with him even began to understand, that he began to see and to realize Oh, this is for the world. And Paul must have been overwhelmed with such amazement and such shock that in reality, when he finally sat down to pen and paper after the end of his life, as we see now that in Hebrews, he's writing it towards the final chapters of his life, that he is going to say to the Jew, this is the Messiah, the one of the Son of Man who has come. And he shall be to the Gentiles salvation. But to us, he shall be the Moshiach. For God has come and walked among us. For he has been the Emmanuel. God with us, God in us, and God for us. So in verse 4, after he's already spoken about who the Moshiach was, who the Moshiach is, the very brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Moshiach is yud heh vav -Hey. Moshiach is God himself. Moshiach is the unnameable one, the unutterable word that God himself has chosen for himself. He was there at the beginning. He has holding all things by the word of his power, and he's seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. Terminologies that only a Jew would know, that the Pharisee of Pharisees recognize what Paul is saying. They're saying, aha, if he's the Moshiach, if he is seated at the right hand of the majesty on high, if he holds all things by the power of his word, then I am undone, for I am as an unkept man, and his holiness has become the righteousness that we have been seeking. He is the one that we waited for. And Paul says, he is. This is who he is. So rather than let even some who might have been in the rabbinic tradition at that time from Hellenism permeate that which was of the Pharisees soon becoming this, the new order of things that would interpret the Torah and become after the rabbis, the rabbinical tradition, after the new halachot that was to come that was after man and not after God, Paul identifies an issue. He says, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Verse 4. Hebrews chapter 1, made so much more, made so much better than the angels. Every Jew knew the angels. Jewish tradition had taught that the angels would come as messengers of God, and God had sent his messengers to the Jewish nation. God had delivered them by angels. Many, many, many Jewish sages, prophets, teachers, even the common shepherds had seen angels. They knew angels. They were aware of angels. Even like what we see today in the Roman Catholic Church when there was the worship of saints and the worship of angels and the worship of what we call idols. The original intent was not to make them into idols and neither was it for the Jew, yet the Jew did worship angels. They were well aware of the sanctity, of the separateness of these beings who had visited earth, who they knew and had seen and had encounters with in some way, shape or form. And every time an angel appeared, it was immediate. 
obeyed, and they obeyed. For the angels that were sent by God were always obvious. It was never a question of a fallen angel. It was an angel. And so Paul makes an identification here. Paul is saying to the Jew, he has been made so much better than angels. He's more than an angel. He's not just a created being. He's made better. As he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. What is an inheritance to become except that the guy who was going to give it to the person who was going to inherit it would be the one that had been chosen for every Jew knew that the inheritance came to the firstborn son unless, unless God chose to change the order, unless God chose to make the inheritance go to another, unless by some other means the inheritance went always to the greater and not the lesser by of whom God chose. For we have seen throughout scripture how it wasn't always the firstborn son. No. As a matter of fact, there were times that God said no. The firstborn son has become an abomination, for they have not walked in my way. But God blessed them anyways and chose to use them in some way to bring about his accomplished purpose. But here in verse 4, Paul is identifying the order has been reversed. It is not about who is of birth. It is not about who is of creation. It is not about who is of inheritance, but it is about whom God has chosen for the inheritance. And he has given him a name, and he has given him an inheritance more excellent than the angels. For the angels were always told, the Jew knew what was the destiny of the angels in heaven. The Jew knew what the angels were. They were in the presence of God, worshiping day and night. And there could only be one one who was greater than an angel. There was no other person that was greater than an angel. For every Jew had looked to the Torah and seen that there was one who would be lesser than an angel, who would become greater than an angel, and he would inherit and become a name greater than theirs. And it would be a name that all of salvation would be identified by. And that name would become Jesus, Joshua, God of salvation. Yehoshua, which is the Hebrew for Joshua, which is the real name of Jesus. Jesus is Joshua in Hebrew. Jesus is the Greek. Hey. But so, he saves the Gentiles. He's Jesus. He saves the Jew. He's Joshua. <laughs> He's Yeshua. That's kind of a family name. But the point being is that Paul knew and portrays and brings forth in verse 4 the reality that a Jew would understand. The reality that having a name greater than the angels could only be one name, one person, one entity, the Moshiach, the Anointed One. It could only be the Messiah. For there was no other one, no other name under heaven whereby a man may be saved. There was no other name whereby the Jew could see that there would be anyone above the angels, for they are in the presence of God. They knew this. They are in the Ark of the Covenant. They knew this. They were in the Holy of Holies. They knew this. And yet, in verse 3, he's already identified this Moshiach, this man. He is seated at the right hand of the majesty of the power on high. And he has a name that is greater than the angels and an inheritance above the angels. Paul has spoken. Paul has chosen. Paul has said, Paul has witnessed, Paul has testified to the reality of who Jesus is. He has said what he has become, what he is, and what we will see soon enough is the unveiling of why he did what he did and he has become what he has become because of how and what his purpose was from the beginning. Paul sets this up so beautifully layer upon layer, setting the foundation, the foundation of where God is from, where God is, what God has is done for him, what God has become, and how God is himself the Moshiach. He lays it down, even as it would be in Genesis. God 
in verse 1, who at sundrise times hath in these last days, verse 2, who being the brightness of his glory, 3, verse 4, being made so much better than the angels. Paul is knocking it down one after another. There are so many things that the Moshiach had to fulfill, and yet here he does, he goes beyond those fulfillments. He goes into the very heart of the Jew, and he says, look, this is God Almighty. This is the one. This is more than you ever imagined God to be, and he has done it himself. And he's revealing it now, and let me tell you about it. Let me show you in a very practical, real, very dynamic drash on the word, a very halakha, a very simple realization that God has come, that God is real, that God has become flesh, that God has lived among us, that God came and was rejected. Paul won't leave it there. Paul will not be satisfied with leaving the Jew in despair for rejecting the only begotten Son of God. For Paul will bring us all to the realization of why he wrote Hebrews, of why he is telling the Jew, of why he spoke to his people one last time to reach out with the gospel of Jesus Christ to let them know that yes, grace trumps law. Law is still in effect. Of course it is. As, as the heavens are above the earth, so too is law designed only for the earthly, but grace is designed for the eternal, for it is from the eternal that grace is extended and given, for it is only from the power of the Almighty on high that grace could be given. It is only from Moshiach that there could come that type of benevolence from God Almighty to give the love that God is manifested in the person, as it says in verse 2 and 3, in the person of the revelation of who God is, love, and demonstrating it by his actions in dying on that which caused him such shame to be lifted up above the world in such a horrible way, and I don't mean death only, but to be humiliated in front of all of mankind. And then to utter the unutterable. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. For the Jew, it was the most powerful person in the universe. For three centuries, it went onward with Jew and Gentile dying for their faith. Hebrews is powerful. Hebrews is real. Hebrews has in detail exactly who Jesus is, what he is, what he's done, and why we can make no mistake about what Paul is saying. Most people will take grace from Romans. But for a Jew, <laughs> Hebrews says it all.